from two people. The first one is, it's something, it's about using the private sector more, something we should be very comfortable with. The second quote is, people go as NHS patients to the private sector and we could do more of it. Can I ask the Deputy Prime Minister which quote is from the PM and which is from the Leader of the Opposition? <laughs> well, uh, Mr Speaker, may I actually just begin by saying genuinely how sorry I was to hear that the Honourable Lady will be standing down at the next election. She and I joined this House at the same time and I know she has contributed much to her party and to this place. And may I also say I'm sure she will wish to join me in celebrating His Majesty King Charles receiving the Scottish regalia pretty much as we speak. There's, there's always time for a Damascan conversion, Mr Speaker. But when, when, when it comes to the NHS, I will take absolutely no lecture from either party on it. It has been there for me, I was born in an NHS hospital. My children were born in an NHS hospital. It's been there for me and my family, and this government has put record funding into it. Very <laughs> black. The, the Deputy Prime Minister, I thank him for his kind words, and we did join this place at the same time, and I'm pretty sure we'll be leaving at the same time. <laughs> that faces the health service across these aisles is workforce. And research shows that Brexit has worsened the UK's shortage of doctors. Yep. European nurses registering to work in the UK fell by 90% after the Brexit referendum. Wow. What more will it take for both him and the Labour Party to admit the damage that Brexit is causing our health services? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it all started off so nicely, Mr Speaker. But, um, <laughs> I don't know whether the Honourable Lady has actually been listening to what the Government has announced this week. We announced an additional £2.4 billion for our groundbreaking NHS workforce plan. That is the first time in the NHS's history that that has happened. And if you look at the record since this party came to power, almost 40,000 more doctors and more than 50,000 more nurses. Once again, the Conservative Party delivering for the NHS. Uh, tonight, at West Lindsay's uh, planning meeting, the RAF will apply for listed building consent to move the grave of Wing Commander Guy Gibson's dog. Apparently, the Home Office are quite content for 2,000 migrants to be cooped up next to 1,000 of my constituents living on, near the base, or actually on the base, but the RAF think it's intolerable that they should leave the grave of a dog who's lain in peace for 80 years. More importantly, will the Home Office start listening to us? If they insist on this proposal, will they put the illegal migrants at a discreet part of the base and let us get up, get on, with £300 million worth of levelling up? A hundred buildings, many of them listed, a two mile long runway, a spaceport, and let the dog lie in peace. <laughs> well, I think my, my honourable friend knows that we do have to take action to address the unacceptable cost of housing migrants in hotels. And I, I actually thank him for his constructive approach that he's taken to RAF Scampton playing a role in respect of that. Of course, Home Office Ministers will have heard his broader representations and I'm sure they will respond to him. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. May I, on behalf of my colleagues, extend our deep appreciation to all those past and present who continue to be dedicated to our NHS, including our staff in the health and social care system in Northern Ireland. Mr Speaker, in Northern Ireland, GPs, nurses, doctors and carers are adversely constrained by a lack of sufficient funding for our health service. The Northern Ireland Fiscal Council have highlighted that our allocation falls beneath need, which compounds the difficulty year on year. Can the Deputy Prime Minister assure me of the willingness of the Government to engage on this issue 
and to ensure that public services get what they need to continue delivering for the people of Northern Ireland. Uh, yes, I'm very happy to give the Right Honourable Gentleman that assurance. As he knows, it is actually the case that uh, the Department of Health in Northern Ireland has been allocated £7.3 billion, pounds, an increase of £20 million above 22-23. But of course it is the case that the, Northern, the absence of a Northern Ireland executive is exacerbating the severe challenges that the healthcare service in Northern Ireland is already facing, and a fully functioning devolved government is the right way to deliver the necessary reforms needed for the Northern Ireland Health Service. Through. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Of the 16,700 cases of melanoma diagnosed in the UK every year, sadly over 2,000 will prove fatal. Regularly applying sunscreen is our most effective weapon against this deadly disease, yet the Treasury remains stubbornly opposed to exempting VAT on these life-saving products. Mm. As a melanoma survivor, and with a further heat wave expected later this month, will my right hand friend do everything in his power to remove VAT on high factor sunscreen to save lives and to support the NHS as they celebrate their 75th anniversary? Yeah. Well, my, my honourable friend is absolutely right to raise the dangers of melanoma. As a, as a fair headed person with a fair headed uh, family, where I'm acutely conscious of the need to wear sun cream. Uh, I won't trespass onto Treasury decisions in this setting, but I know my right hon. Friend, the Chancellor, will have heard her representations. Mr Crawley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, after 13 years of Tory government, this government's record is pretty dismal. Let's consider it spiralling out of control inflation, interest rates set to hit 6.5% by the end of the year, energy prices double the rest of Europe, food shortages and strikes across the public sector and NHS, Three decisions in this setting, but I know my right honourable friend, the Chancellor, will have heard her representations. Mr. Crawley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, after 13 years of Tory government, this government's record is pretty dismal. Let's consider spiralling out of control inflation, interest rates set to hit 6.5% by the end of the year, energy prices double the rest of Europe, food shortages and strikes across the public sector and NHS. And graduates leaving university today with little, with mountains of debt and little to no prospect of home ownership. Yeah. Let me ask the Deputy Prime Minister, will he admit his Tory government's failure and urge the Prime Minister to call a general election now? Deputy Prime Minister. Well, rather than focusing on playing politics, we are actually delivering for the British people. I, I was. I listened to the Honourable Lady's litany. Uh, I was interested to in note that her leader has been in power for 100 days. And what's their record been? Three failing First Ministers, two unfinished ferries, and a failed de deposit return scheme. I think we can all agree the people of Scotland deserve better. Um, Conservative governments have a proud record of supporting the UK's steel industry. Yeah. And I've stood up many times in this house. I don't know where they're laughing, Mr. Speaker, because steel production halved under Labour. Yeah. I've stood up many times in this house to talk about the importance of steel, not just to my hometown of Scunthorpe, but to our whole nation. Yeah. So, will my right honourable friend agree with me? We are always going to need steel in this country, and if we can't make it ourselves, we're going to have to ship it off on the other side of the world with all the emissions, environmental and ethical concerns that that will inevitably bring. Will he reaffirm today the government's commitment to making sure that we take further measures to ensure that we have a sustainable, long-term steelmaking production in this country? Well, I, I'm very happy to reaffirm this government's commitment to steel manufacturing, and I pay tribute to my honourable friend. I know what a champion she is for steel production in Scunthorpe, and long may she continue to do so. We have made meaningful offers of support to Tata and British Steel, and the Secretary of State recently visited Tata. In fact, it is ahead of schedule. Recently, the North Coast Space Cluster has been developed involving enterprise agencies and companies. Does the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister agree with me that this can build massively on the uh, skills that have been built up for over many years at Dunre, and secondly, that the establishment of links, international links, with uh, possible companies in the United States can only be good news for the far north of Scotland? 
Yes, I, I completely agree with the honourable gentleman's uh, remarks. The development of this new spaceport is a key part of our ambition to grow the UK's space launch capabilities. And it is the fact that the first three years are expected to reach £20 million of investment, creating 40 jobs. And we are working with the United States, particularly through the Technology Safeguards Agreement, to allow UK companies to exchange technology uh, with the United States. Aaron Bell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Could I associate myself with your comments about the NHS and pay tribute to all NHS workers, both in Newcastle under Lyme and across the country? And on that note, could I welcome the new long-term workforce plan, and in particular the extra 40% places for dental schools? Yeah. Uh, access to dentistry has been an issue for a number of my constituents. And would my right honourable friend consider the merits of actually opening new dental schools, not just new dental places? Keel University is one of the best medical schools in the country and would make an excellent site for a new dental school if that would be. Well, as ever, my honourable friend makes a very strong case for his constituency. Uh, as a result of the NHS long term workforce plan, uh, we are currently assessing capacity at existing dental schools to see whether they can accommodate the expansion in training places. But of course, we retain an open mind as to whether we need further such uh, education facilities. Give my bitch up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It was a pleasure to join colleagues from across the House this morning for the NHS 75th anniversary park run on this special day. However, my joy was short lived when I returned to my office to find the usual array of emails from desperate constituents mm. who cannot get a doctor's appointment, a dentist's appointment, access to children's mental health services, or proper care for their loved ones. Does he agree with me that, as today's report from three highly respected think tanks suggests, after a decade of underinvestment, our beloved health service faces either managed decline under the Tories or a Labour government with a radical new health and wellbeing strategy putting its back on its feet. Well, Mr Speaker, it may not surprise you to hear I don't agree with that characterisation. Actually, I'll tell you about this government's record on the NHS. Record funding, record doctors, record nurses, record scans, record operations. The only record from the party opposite is in Wales, where they now have the worst A&D waiting times in the country. The only other record is the length of the answers. Maybe we can speed up with Richard Drax. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I associate myself with your comments about the NHS? My constituents in Weymouth and on Portland and I are getting a little tired of being told that placing a migrant barge in our port is in the national interest. It is not in the national interest, nor in ours. This barge, designed for 222, will accommodate 506 illegal migrants, already testing our overstretched resources. It was imposed on us without any consultation. Many concerns, both on the barge and what the 506 young men will do going around a seaside resort at the height of the summer, unmonitored and with little money. Can my honourable friend stop this and ask my honourable friend, the Home Secretary, to do likewise? Well, I'm, I'm sure my honourable friend appreciates that we need to reduce the bill of housing asylum seekers in hotels and we need to look at different measures to accommodate them. Of course, I am very happy to engage uh, with the Honourable Gentleman, I'm sure the Home Secretary will do as well, to ensure that we can find a satisfactory solution in his constituency that protects his constituents' interests. Yeah. Harris. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Last week, the coroner found that the cause of Luke Ashton's suicide in April 2021 was gambling disorder. Immediately before his death, Luke, bombarded with inducements, placed over 1,200 bets. At no point did the operator intervene. From his previous brief, the, pre the Deputy Prime Minister will have extensive knowledge of the harm these inducements cause. So does he agree that the commitments to curb advertising and promotions in the Gambling White Paper do not go far enough mm. to reduce harm and prevent more tragedies like Luke Ashton's suicide? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, the uh, Honourable Lady will know from our conversations when I was Digital Secretary that I share her concerns about gambling inducements, and indeed I pay tribute to her for her campaigning on this issue. Uh, I think we have got a very good set of proposals in the gambling uh, white paper, and that sits alongside the 2019 NHS long-term plan, which committed to 15 specialist units across England to support those with gambling addiction by 2024. So I think we have good, good proposals in place. Smith. Thank you, Mr Speaker. May I draw the House's attention to the fact that we have the Chief Minister of His Majesty's Government of Gibraltar in the gallery, uh, Fabian Ricardo. Uh, can I seek an assurance from the Deputy Prime Minister that as the UK-EU negotiations with regard to the border between Gibraltar and Spain continue, that the sovereign, freely expressed opinions of the Gibraltarian people to remain British will be protected, yeah, yeah. as well as their security and economic interests? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to give my honourable friend and, indeed, the First Minister of Gibraltar exactly that assurance uh, this government will always stand up for the people of Gibraltar and their right to determine their own future. Gerald Jones. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Sarcomas are cancers that can affect any part of the body, inside or outside, including muscles, bones, tendons, blood vessels and fatty tissues. Sarcoma is rare. 15 people diagnosed every day in the UK, around 5,300 around the UK, including families in Merthyr Tidville and Rumney. Awareness is low, and as this is Sarcoma Awareness Week, could I ask the Deputy Prime Minister if he will meet with me and families affected so that we can discuss what more the Government can do uh, to raise awareness and vital funds for research going forward? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm very happy to, to give that commitment. I think probably best on behalf of health ministers. And indeed, uh, one of my colleagues in, in Downing Street, who was the Prime Minister's uh, PPS, sadly died of that disease. So I, I have a, a great awareness of it, and it's important that we continue to raise its profile. Paul Howell. Uh, um, last week, as an alumni of Durham University, I had the pleasure of going to the installation of Dr. Fiona Hill as the new Chancellor. Mm. Dr Hill started in Bishop Auckland, couldn't afford a school uniform to go to the high school when she got a scholarship, finished up working in the White House and is an example of social mobility beyond yeah. it. That's what she's going to be championing as the new Chancellor. Could I ask him to encourage the Secretary of State for levelling up to work with me and the Left Behind Neighbourhoods APPG to do everything we can to support her? Yeah. Well, I, I join my honourable friend in relaying the government's congratulations to her, and I will ensure that the Secretary of State hears the representations that he made. Um, Mr Speaker, universities in Cardiff and indeed across the UK are home to world-leading research and innovation, but thousands of jobs and huge amounts of expertise are now at risk because of the government's dithering in negotiations over Horizon. The FT reported last week that Sir Paul Nurse, Nobel Laureate and head of the Francis Crick Institute, describing the delays as absurd and damaging science and damaging the country. So is the government still committed to negotiating a deal? And if they are, why don't they get on with it? Yeah. Well, since we agreed the Windsor framework, we've had very constructive discussions on Horizon. But the difference between my party and his is that we won't accept a deal at any price. We will wait until we get the best deal for the British people and British universities. Yeah. Bradley. Yeah. 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 Mr Speaker. I am running a campaign at the moment, a year of reasons to visit the moorlands, where each week for a year I will focus on one of the many reasons to visit the moorlands, um, including we have had so far Hetty's Tea Room in Froggle, we have had Heaton House Farm Wedding Venue, we have had Brilliant Artists and Alton Towers, and this week is Leek Club Day. Can I invite my right uncle friend and you, Mr Speaker, to visit the Staffordshire Moorlands constituency to see one of the reasons for yourself? Yeah. Well, I would be delighted to do so. I think maybe Hetty's Tea Room is more my cup of tea than Alton Towers, but I'm sure I can arrange a visit there. I think we'll both go on the big rides together. There we are. Chris Law. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I think everyone in this House can recognise that my city of Dundee is a city to be proud of. World-leading yeah. universities, pioneering businesses and the determined SNP City Council leading the way yeah. that is real ambition to deliver for the future. In order to continue our journey, the potential delivery of a world-class site by the Eden Project in our city will help cement our reputation and bring further investment, jobs and 
a boost our local economy. So can the Deputy Prime Minister therefore confirm that the UK Government will deliver on previous promises and finally commit to support capital funding for the Eden Project in my city? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm a very big supporter of the Eden Project, and I very much hope we can have one in Dundee. Of course, the United Kingdom Government always stands ready to support people in Scotland and support people in Dundee. Thank you, Ford. Thank you, Mr. Deputy, uh, Mr. Speaker. As the, uh, Mr. As the, um, as the <laughs> As the child of two NHS doctors, the sister of an NHS doctor and the wife of an NHS doctor, can I also say thank you to everyone who works in our NHS? And will my right honourable friend send particular congratulations to the medical students from the new medical school at Anglia Ruskin University in Chelmsford, who are graduating as doctors in a couple of weeks' time? It's the first time we've ever trained doctors in Essex. It has been hugely successful. Will he meet with me to discuss doubling the size of our medical school? Yeah. Well, of course, I am very happy to offer my sincere congratulations to those students. I know what a difficult course it is to qualify as a, as a doctor, so they thoroughly deserve their graduation ceremony. And, of course, health ministers will be very happy to meet with my honourable friend, my right honourable friend, to discuss uh, exactly those proposals. Ellen Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My constituent, who was a first-year university student, tragically took his own life in May. He had signed a private sector tenancy for his next year's accommodation with his parents as the guarantor. The tenancy includes a clause which states that the responsibilities of the guarantor are unaffected by the death of a tenant, and the lettings agency are disgracefully insisting on enforcing this abhorrent requirement. My constituents not only have to live with the devastating loss of their son, but also face terrible financial hardship because of this cruelty. Will the Deputy Prime Minister support my, cause, my call for the inclusion of a clause within the long overdue Renters Reform Bill to outlaw this practice and protect bereaved families? Well, what, what the Honourable dis, uh, Lady described sounds totally abhorrent, and I'm very much very happy to look into the details of it and discuss what measures might be brought forward to address it. John Barron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At a time of record employment, an unemployment rate nearly half that of the EU average, and strong inward investment. Can you explain, perhaps, my, uh, why every single Labour government since the Second World War has ended an economic failure? with sterling weaker and unemployment usually higher. Yeah. Well, my honourable friend is, is totally right. I, I might add to it that they also spend every last penny in the Treasury. And I well remember when we entered government the note saying there was no money left. We should never allow that to happen to the British people again. Yeah. The Germans. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Our um, absentee Prime Minister didn't turn up to the Owen Paterson vote, he didn't turn up to the Boris Johnson vote, he won't stand up to the MPs who called the Privileges Committee a kangaroo court, and yesterday he embarrassed himself by acting like a, a stroppy schoolboy uh, in front of the Liaison Committee. Now, with NHS waiting lists at record high and the Tory mortgage, Tory mortgage penalty hitting my constituents hard, he's bitten off more than he can chew, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure that there was a, a question in that. Uh, well, I might respectfully say, Mr. Speaker, is a, is a, a rant. Um, I, I would proudly defend this government's record, both in growing the economy in the last two years faster than any other country in the G7, record low levels of unemployment fewer people in workless households, all of which would be put at risk if the party opposite ever entered power. That completes Prime Deputy Prime Minister's questions. Just like the Chamber, please. Sorry.
Oh, the jumper.